That's right, everyone. You are now rocking with the best. This is your boy, BK, the boss of Bitcoin, the Cristo of crypto. And if you don't like me, you must not like money. Today is June 25th. Uh, Bitcoin is $2,500 uh, at, a, at a decision point, a, a kind of a point of equilibrium. Um, you know, it's a, it's a big inflection point in the market. It's definitely uh, some money moving around, you know, between Ethereum, uh, between some of the altcoins, Litecoin, Ripple, and even uh, with the stock market. The stock market uh, is looking at trying to break all time highs. And ultimately, that has a, a big impact on uh, how much money stays in Bitcoin, how much money comes into Bitcoin. So now it's kind of like a uh, decision point. So uh, what I wanted to do, um, we actually had uh, one of our community members, you know, make a request. And, and some of the things I like to try to do is, you know, whenever you guys uh, reach out to me directly, I try to, um, you know, accommodate. And, and one of the, one of the uh, comments we got today was, uh, please help me uh, on the trend lines for TradingView. Uh, essentially, what, what I see is we have a lot of people learning how these markets work. And then we have a lot of people, you know, uh, trying to trying to study the charts and, and trying to understand everything. So instead of, uh, you know, going on about some in-depth chart and, you know, some new trade of the day, I really want to take a step back and show you how to set up uh, a trading view account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an entirely new playlist um, you know, that's going to be dedicated, uh, to, to trade setup, uh, basically account setup on trading view. And so what I did was I put a link in the description of this video. It's called, uh, it just says trading view. I think it's like the second or third, uh, link that you'll see, um, down, down the row. If you go down in the description, um, it says uh, free charts, BD Kelly 1203. You click that link. That will take you to tradingview.com. Uh, it will take you to a page that looks just like this. So in this page, we, uh, you know, you click this little box up here, join for free. Um, TradingView, just a little background. TradingView is a very, very, very uh, good website. It's one of the best for experienced and beginner traders. It has a great community, a lot of chat, a lot of pictures, a lot of visuals, a lot of technical uh, tools, you know, to help you learn along the way. So after you click join for free, uh, it'll ask for your email address, um, you know, and a password, I think. Uh, you click that. Uh, you set up your account. Basically, it says your account is not yet active. This is the exact screen you will see. Uh, you go back into your email, click the little verification link just to confirm you're a real person, uh, and then you are set up. Uh, that's what the account looks like. You can see BK Crypto Trader. I just made this thing, you know, literally minutes uh, before we went on the air tonight. So this is the exact process that you will go through. So um, you click that link, uh, set up your username, and it verifies you're a real person. And then you get inside the system. And as you can see, it's a lot going on. Um, you know, it can be a little bit overwhelming at first. It can be a little bit uh, comp uh, confusing, but um, let's see. Yeah, but it definitely um, is very, very educational. It has traders from all over the world on here uh, talking about all different types of charts. Um, if you want to see what type of charts specifically, you know, you can click on uh, market summary over here and you can see they have indexes. Index is basically the different types of markets. So the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, you know, the, the DAX, the Dow, big, big time exchanges. Forex is foreign exchanges, Forex. So now you have the dollar, the euro, the, the Japanese yen, the British pound, all these different, um, you know, exchanges that, you know, big, big time companies try to make money on and uh, manipulate currencies and start wars against. But we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about 
Bitcoin. So let's keep it on BTC. And as you can see, you know, it's got Bitcoin listed right up there between Forex and bonds. So, you know, even the big time money players are starting to take Bitcoin a little bit more serious. If for whatever reason that link doesn't work in the description, it should. Uh, what I'll do right now is uh, drop a link inside uh, the chat for you guys as well. So let me do that real quick. I see a couple people might be having a problem uh, with the link. So now you have it on the chat as well for everybody live on the air listening to you. So one of the things with TradingView, uh, the only uh, disadvantage I'll say is you get a lot of these ads. Um, I say no thanks, but honestly, after a while, it's kind of like really, you know, uh, d detracting. Um, so what I what I did, I just paid, I think it's like 10 or 20, maybe 30 bucks um, just to try it out for a month. And then you don't have to worry about it anymore. So that's always an option, too. And what I found, it actually helps because then, you know, you have a lot more options. So, you know, see, this is a free account. So you get like all these little pop up ads that are like really kind of annoying. Um, if anybody knows of like a blocker or something, you know. That would be helpful too. All right. So this is trading view. This is Bitcoin versus the dollar. And now we are live on our chart. Uh, first thing we want to do is we want to go up here and uh, save this chart because what we're going to set up, you know, we don't want to have to set up every single time. So we go down right now, it's unnamed. It's just a regular, you know, default chart. So first things first, we want to uh, click that unnamed chart and we want to name it. We can name this uh, BK's boss chart, right? Because, you know, this is, a, this is how you do it. And then maybe if we have more than one version, the trend lines, what I like to do is name the trend lines. So it's going to be 72177. So that's the name of our chart. And uh, now, you know, it saved it. And we can even click save as, you know, and it shows that it's a copy. So once we click this gray box right here and rename it, then it saves it. So that's awesome. So now we have this chart saved. Anytime we're making progress on the chart, all you do is you click up there and you click save and it saves it. Another way to do it is just click that little cloud icon and it saves it. One last way to do it is to click save chart under that drop down arrow and it saves it. So now you know three different ways to do it. Uh, one of the benefits of having a pro account, um, actually this is not a pro account, but yeah, see multiple chart layouts. Uh, so if you do upgrade to the pro account, you can have multiple chart layouts, which means you kind of get like a split screen right there and you're able to, uh, you know, see different options, but we don't need that right now. Cool. All right. So again, this is Bitcoin versus the US dollar. This is trading view. It's a daily chart. And now we want to set up our indicators. Um, and what the indicators are, are um, the different measurements of the data that we will be using to make uh, decisions with. Um, so uh, the biggest thing we want to do is called the moving average. This is how we make most of our decisions. You type it in in that little box right there, and it pops in right there. You click it once, you click it twice, you click it a third time, and you can see it's filling in on the left-hand side, right? Another thing it shows you just by default is uh, is the uh, volume. We don't necessarily need that. Uh, so what I like to do is just you know take it off. Uh, it does help sometimes, but there are other tools if you ever need it um, just to uh, get the same type of information. So we have the moving averages. We're going to set those up, but I really don't like how this frame looks right now. It's a lot of 
useless information. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to clean up the frame. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of this little box right there. You know, we don't, we definitely don't need that right away. We're not executing orders uh, inside of TradingView. So the way we do that, you uh, right click it and you click uh, hide panel. Bam. It's gone. Another thing I'm going to do is I like to have as much space inside this window as possible to operate. So I'm going to collapse this little side panel over here. The way you do that is you just click that little arrow right there on the side, and now the side panel disappears. So we get rid of that thing too. Now we're starting to look how my charts look. Uh, on every other video I do. This last thing right here, these little flags are like reporting, you know, uh, talking head of the secret eye people speaks on global economic issues. We don't really need that. We get enough information from the talking heads through their uh, corporate bo purchase bloggers. So we don't necessarily need these guys. We can right click that and click hide events on charts. I'm sure the talking heads will understand. Now, last thing. And this is, again, this is all, you know, the way I like to do it. So as you get more comfortable with TradingView, you know, just play around with it. Whatever works for you, um, feel free to do it. Uh, what I've also found is like, especially over time, uh, the white background is, is pretty hard on my eyes. So what I do is color, I go to color theme, and I click black. You just left click the background, um, you know, anywhere inside the chart, and it drops down this little drop menu right there. And you go to color theme and click black. Even if you click save as, save as, you know, uh, black. I don't think, you know, I don't think you necessarily need to do that because black is pretty much standard. Uh, they do have a few other cool colors. I tried the blue one time it was kind of cool but then it got kind of hard to see like the different colors of the trend lines so that didn't really last too long i found that black works the best because like everything pops off and that's all you're looking for is really just something to identify against if we have any questions on the chat i know you guys are in the chat right now so i guess i'll pause for like 30 seconds and see if you got any questions Um, one of the questions we have is what markets uh, are tied to Coinbase? So that's a great question. So when we start actually looking up different uh, different uh, charts, you know, you do that by typing up here. So say we wanted to look up Ethereum. All we do is we start typing it ETH, and it pops up immediately, pops up like all these stocks, right? And from across the entire world. Um, but the easy way to categorize it. They have stocks, they have futures, they have Forex, everything that begins with ETH. We want cryptocurrency. And now I think it automatically populates like the most popular one. It sends to the top of the list. So you can see Coinbase and Kraken are at the top. Uh, ETH BTC, ETH CAD. Um, and that's something else you have to look for because these two aren't actually the same. This is measuring against uh, the Canadian dollar, whereas this is measuring against Bitcoin. So you want to make sure you're always measuring against Bitcoin. And because Coinbase is kind of the most popular one, uh, that's how you get it right there. And so now what I want to do, and I'll actually uh, mark this time because that was another comment that I had, um, is giving people a table of contents uh, when we actually get to a certain point. So this is about 15 minutes in. Um, now what I do is we actually set the trend lines. And the way we do that is we modify the moving averages. So let's start to do that right now. We go to format, length, the first one, we wanna make seven. Just click seven right there. I like to change the style. I like the, you know, the first one to be green uh, cause it pops off a lot easier. I change the thickness right here 
uh, you can kind of see like down on the chart below me, the thickness is changing. I like the, I like it kind of like in the middle. So that guy right there. Price line, you don't really need. It just kind of shows where the price is. But you see like it takes a, it goes across the entire chart and it's really confusing. So I don't use that at all. And that's the only thing you need to do. Um, instead of, if you notice, I keep like moving the chart like that and it's kind of jumpy. So one of the things I can do is uh, double click this panel on the right. Um, I'll left click it and I will unclick auto scale. I don't like that. And that's probably one of the reasons it's jumping so much. So this is actually a major, major uh, point, you guys. When we do auto scale, uh, we want to unclick that so now you can have more control over where the chart goes before it kept like jerking around because it was trying to like scale the price with the window and it was really, really, really confusing. So make sure you always have auto scale unchecked. And now you can double click it and it should jump a lot better um, to fill the window up with data. You can see like right here, it had like this big extreme up there. Again, Coinbase has, for whatever reason, been sketchy as F uh, with all the different extremes that it's allowed to happen in the market. Um, I think you guys know how I feel on that one based off a video. Um, so we won't talk about that. So, but yeah, you can change the axis right here. You can double click it and it will automatically zoom uh, to fill the frame. So we have one moving average. Let's make the second format. And this is going to be our 21 day. So 7, 21, and we wanna make this one red. And as you can see, like even from going uh, from like seven, um, this is where it's at right now, to 21, just look at the red line. It makes it a lot flatter. And what it and the reason is because now it's taking in 21 days. I'm just I'm gonna change this time because I really don't like that thing jumping like that. Um, it takes 21 days of information versus or 21 candles, I'm sorry, 21 candles of information. So while the green line is taking seven candles, uh, we'll just do like a little quick measurement tool. The green line is only taking seven bars. our red line and we'll just throw it like you know up down down there somewhere our red line is actually taking 21 bars and so that's why it doesn't move as much because it has a lot more information that it's communicating. Uh, one of the stories I like to tell in some of my lessons is, you know, you can think of them, you know, as, as two brothers. Uh, the green line is the younger brother and the red line is the older brother. Younger brother always wants to go outside and play and, you know, run around all day. He has a lot of energy, you know, but the older brother, he's the younger brother wants to run around, but, you know, he's always coming back to try and pull the older brother to come out with him. You know, it's no fun if he's just outside by himself. So every now and then, you know, once he gets too far, he comes back and literally grabs uh, the older brother and pulls him with them. So they have kind of like a big brother uh, relationship where the younger brother is really, really vibrant. You know, he's always exploring and every now and then, you know, he'll come and, uh, you know, show the older brother what he found. And every now and then the older brother has to just go check on him, you know, make sure he's not getting into anything too crazy. But for the most part, they're always pretty close together. And a lot of times the younger brother just kind of, you know, sticks around, uh, you know, checks things out. So they stay pretty, pretty close together. And the last thing we want uh, to introduce is our um, 
77. This is our long-term moving average. So this is the one that has all of the history or as much history as you're going to need, you know, to execute a uh, confident trade. Uh, the 77 day moving average, uh, again, has 77 uh, bars inside of it. So you can think of this one as like the uh, Papa Bear, you know, the young, I think of, you know, when I was little, my mom, she would read the uh, story of the Berenstain Bears and like, you know, the, the boys that would run around. So the orange one is like Papa Bear. You know, he doesn't really like to go outside. Um, you'll notice that uh, the younger brother and the middle brother, you know, will, will more or less pull him together in a direction, but it takes both of them before he even responds, you know, so the, the little brother might, might just be running around and the red is kind of just chilling, but once they run together in a direction, then the papa bear is like, okay, you got me. What do you want to do? And then they're like, oh my God, it's so fun. It's so fun. It's so fun. The little brother comes back, get the big brother, the big brother like, yeah, this is really cool. And now the papa bear is like, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. You know, and, and just sometimes to verify, the little brother comes down and touches the papa. Papa's like, no, I'm here. I'm here. It's okay. But notice once the little bear, you know, touches papa bear, the big brother slows down and he's like, what's going on? And papa bear's like, oh, okay, well, this is where you guys want to be. Okay, that's where we'll be for a little bit until, you know, they decide to move in another direction. So together, all three of them are working to communicate uh, the story inside the chart. And one cannot move too far in a direction without the consent of all of them. So this is at the end of the day, this is what our strategy does. It communicates the relationship of the lines to each other. And so when we draw trend lines, especially, you know, the little bear and the papa bear, uh, whenever they come together, um, some that's where we said, that's where lightning strikes. So you can see like little bear, you know, normally is just running all over the place, but together um, with the red, it's like, it's like a family reunion. Um, and whenever you, whenever you have all three of them together, you can kind of mark that spot. And now, you know, you guys have seen how to set up this chart. You'll be able to do this stuff on your own, but you can kind of mark that spot. Lightning strikes. And I've showed that in a lot of other videos. It doesn't happen very often, but when all three of them basically come together, um, something, something big is about to happen because that is a lot of information, a lot of different levels of information. And so by design, it's not made to come to a central point, but when it does, it, it reacts and it reacts big. And so that's the premise that we designed this entire method on um, is circling those points. Um, and we can find our circle button, where is it? This is like a new platform, so I'm learning this for the first time with you guys. There it goes, right there. One of the things you can do as well is you can click that little star on the right-hand side, and it'll start to make this little uh, quick access menu. So we can just do our little circle tool uh, right there. Move that lightning up above it. And all we do now, any chart, and this is any chart, is we start to identify where these, uh, all three of them come together. So right there and right there. We draw a trend line between the two of those. And this is just a general trend line. This is not perfect. Uh, one of the other things I like to do is I like to make the borders of these circles white. And I like to make the thickness a little bit more I like to make them brighter uh, so you can see how I'm doing that. And this little panel right there kind of lets you fade it in and fade it out. I like to leave it right about there, you know, somewhere in the middle to where I can see it, but it still pops off the chart and I can see what's behind it. Right. And so now 
we can draw a general trend line of this relationship. One thing you will see is that this thing gives you a lot of different tools, right? It gives you the horizontal line. You definitely want to start that. It gives you a trend line. You definitely want to start that. Um, let's see what else you want to star. I don't really use none of those. A lot of these are for people that don't really know how to trade. So they use all these complicated charts. They don't even know what they do, but they use them so they can feel like they're smart. We don't need that. And then a rectangle. That's really all you need. Circle, line, line, rectangle. That's how you beat the market, guys. You know? Run tailed at the Wall Street. Here you go line let's make our line <clears throat> change your width a little bit i like to change it to the third one make it a solid line now this one is something you do want to do uh you definitely want to change the endpoints to extend all the way through and the way you do that so essentially what i did uh default it has it set on these little you know pencil and endpoint. So when you draw a line, that's what it looks like. But the minute you hit uh, the extension buttons right there, it extends it all the way through. So that'll be very, very useful because once we get a good line, we'll be able to copy and paste it and it will extend through the entire chart to show the relationship all together. So this is, uh, you know, I'm sorry. That's uh, really what we want to do at the end of the day is start to show. And this, for whatever reason, this uh, scale doesn't like me at all. So I'll just start dragging. I don't, I don't like how it's jerking like that. Oh, and then you can see, like, I guess for the uh, 21, we, we didn't take off that little red line right there. So if you ever see you have something like that, uh, you just double click it. One of those price lines is showing up. So let's see, what is that? I don't even know. What the, oh, is it this thing? Label background. I'm trying to get rid of this little. Oh, that's the active. So what this is showing is the price of Bitcoin right now. Or I'm sorry, the price of Ethereum right now. So right now it's at point uh, one zero nine nine eight. And it's showing the countdown until the next timer. So essentially, we're on a two-hour candle. It's showing that it has a minute and hour and 31 before uh, it moves on to the next candle. So that's what that is. If we don't want it, I don't normally like to see those. So again, oh, and it's back on auto scale. For whatever reason, it always goes into auto scale. And I don't like that at all. Um, I really don't. So yeah, lock scale. So I guess we got to put it on lock scale. And you see now it's a lot easier for me to control. Yeah, for whatever reason, it likes to go in auto scale. So if you go in lock scale, that might help. But now we can remove that little countdown, that red line right there, by just unchecking it. That didn't work. Maybe uncheck precise labels. That didn't work either. Uncheck symbol last value. We're getting there. <laughs> Scale properties, right axis, track time, right axis. Sometimes I like to put it on the left axis just to switch it up. It's still going all the way across. I don't want it there. Let's see. Left axis block scale. Countdown indicator. No. You want to uncheck a lot of this stuff because, like, it'll just throw garbage on your chart. You really don't need it. You 
you want to keep that one on because that gives you all this information up there. So we want to keep that on. Okay. That might be okay. Oh, and then the last thing is a crosshair. Uh, I like to do like a grayish white one, um, like dotted line, kind of medium. Um, let's see how that looks. Yeah, now you see I got I got my lines going all the way across. So that's cool. For whatever reason, I really don't know why that's there. And I don't want it there. It's starting to annoy me. Um, all right. Well, I won't. Oh, background. Yeah, I won't take up too much time on that. But if you guys figure it out. Oh, price line. Yeah, the damn price line. I don't, I don't. I told him I didn't want a price line. So there you go. Style price line. Get rid of it. Cool. All right. So there we go. Now you've got the chart like BK. And once you do all this, you definitely want to save it. Now this thing is saved. You are locked in and you are ready uh, to pick up how to trade like a boss. So this is pretty much where I start every video at. And now you can see you even can zoom in and zoom out because we have lock scale on. That's how it zooms. Now look how clean that is. You see that? So now you got this thing locked and loaded, ready to go. You can start putting horizontal lines in to show the support, you know, where this thing uh, explodes out at. You can start copy and pasting your different trend lines to show the different channels that are built into it. Look at that. Just from, um, you know, copy and pasting the one trend line we already did, we threw it down there at that a uh, little explosion out, you know, where the green uh, little brother across the papa at, where all three of them came together. And by design, what do we end up with? The highest point possible on that run. That is not an accident. These charts tell themselves exactly what they are allowed to do before they are allowed to do it. Exact same thing right here copy and paste our yellow bubble look at where we put it at same thing little brother come home big brother on the side he grabbed papa bear and they say all right let's go next time it happens they already know together where the candle is going to stop at so these lines are literally talking to each other all the time and this is what i wanted to show you guys so essentially this is how I start every video. This is the work that's done in the background before any video is ever made. You guys can now see, you know, it's pretty easy to set up. And, and now from any video, uh, you know to set up and, and you can just jump in there. So, so this is going to be the first video in how to chart like a boss. After that, you'll see, you know, the exact, uh, the exact, um, trend lines I drew, you can draw them, you can start to learn how these charts come together, and ultimately, you can start to learn how to make a lot of money. Uh, just generally speaking, right now, um, in the market, it's, a, again, it's a, it's a bit of a, a gray area. Um, I told you, you know, I told you a while ago that this this thing was a uh, was not not the business. So, you know, I don't think we need to harp on that. I think I told you somewhere uh, somewhere over in there, you know, to sell at like 0.14, I'm pretty sure. So, you know, if you haven't seen that video, you should watch it. Um, don't think that this is a buy whenever we know by design, whenever the green is under the red, it is not a good time for the stock. It's underwater. So right now, Ethereum is underwater. Uh, once this green comes above the red, that means big brother, um, I'm sorry, little brother, you know, has gotten permission to go outside and they can go make money again. But until that happens, um, right now, this thing, you can see the little brother is just pulling it down, pulling it down. And daddy has agreed. So now, you know, it's going to take a while before the orange line levels out 
and it's able to go up again. So this thing is like legitimately on a downtrend right now. So please don't let any of these broke bloggers, you know, come and tell you that Ethereum is a buy and you all need to dump all your money into it. Don't do it. It's going to take a while before it comes back. Um, and so just real quick for this brush, because you see, I like to use the brush a lot and, you know, that doesn't look very good. Same thing we do. Color, you know, I like my brush to be blue. I like it to be thicker you know, something like that. So yeah, and then I fade the color out a little bit. So, you know, what, what I'm saying is Ethereum is on a strict downtrend. And the reason I know that is because the angle of the orange line, first of all, the orange line needs to be flat in order for it to go up, right? And right now, it's going to take a very long while in order for that to happen. That is not in that cycle anytime soon. So as long as we have the green line and the red line both going down, that orange line has to follow. And that's what you will see over time in any of these charts is that one follows the other, follows the other. That's all I wanted to show you guys for tonight. You can look at Bitcoin. It's kind of sitting sideways. It's more or less doing the same thing. I would say just initially, don't get discouraged with Bitcoin. Again, the stock market is about to break through an all-time high. Uh, the Federal Reserve has pretty much ensured that uh, by their you know, actions and, and Warren Buffett investing a lot of money to bail bail in some big big time bank that was ready to fall under so it's a lot of it's a lot of games that they're playing right now just to keep the stock market afloat but in all actuality that's good because we don't want their money in crypto right now it gives you guys a lot more time to buy in litecoin is still cheap ripple is still cheap so make sure over these next few weeks before bitcoin picks back up you know you're you're able to to make some moves and and increase your positions in some of those cryptos before they spike um so again if you appreciate this video if you appreciate this content we got 200 people uh from around the world do me a favor real quick shout your country out. Um, I want to bring you guys on the screen and let people see uh, that we do have a global community. Again, you know, one of the things that I try to do, you guys, is is focus on positivity. I want I want people to be empowered. I want you know countries to be empowered. I want parents to be empowered. I want students to be empowered. So in my teachings, you know, one of the things I try to do is reach back into the community. And by doing that together, we will be able to share, to build, to learn. And so uh, the last thing I try to do is, is reach back and just show the people love, you know, let, let people know, you know, we, we definitely have a global community. We got Kazakhstan. I saw Paris. I saw Ireland. I see Greece, Netherlands, Mexico, San Francisco. What up Bay area, daily city, baby. You know what I'm saying? I used to catch the bar to work off in Barcadero, uh, France, Michigan, Australia. You know, we got, we got our mates down under, right? We got USA ATL, baby Sandy Springs, right off 280 North. Come holla at me. You know, Poland, Mexico, Holland, Australia, New Mexico, Cali, Connecticut. I'm in Connecticut right now. I'm here helping the United Way, you know, plan a youth summit for next week. Portugal, beautiful, beautiful city. Look at, look at this. This is what the crypto community is. This is what it was made for. This is why we're here. It's beautiful. It's amazing. So if you can appreciate, you know, uh, just the power that we have, all I ask is give this video a thumbs up, copy and paste the URL and text it to anybody that might appreciate it with you. Um, that's all I'm trying to do is grow this channel. You know, we have a very vibrant uh, community. We have uh over 5,000. I should have did a celebration. I apologize. I'm going to do one tomorrow. We cracked 5,000 subscribers uh, in the Facebook group. We have over 1,000 people in there. Uh, so make sure if you're not in the Facebook group, you know, I'll, I'll put a chat. Uh, it's a link in the description and I'll send it in the chat right now. 
we're on there too. So literally every day you're able to connect uh, with people all over the world 24 uh, seven just to talk the charts. You know, I try to jump on there whenever I can and give support. You know, I, I came, I came from the stock market. I made, I actually lost a bunch of money in the stock market. You can see people are also, uh, you know, still getting the, the June uh, trades, the June uh, top 10 picks, but I lost a lot of money in the stock market, you know? Um, so one of the things I wanted to do is just set up a community where we can try to help each other. And I think one of the reasons I lost because I was trying to do it by myself. So, so why not bring, you know, 1200 people together that's smarter than you. Let's, let's make this money together. Um, every day, you know, five, six, seven, eight, ten times a day, I'm approving all people. The doors are always open. So again, if you appreciate this, just give it a thumbs up. Let YouTube know this is solid content. Uh, it's classified as educational material. I really don't get into, you know, the bickering and the banting and all this other stuff about conspiracies and suppression and, you know, everything that they try to distract us with, the talking heads on TV, with the voices in their ear. Um, try to talk, try to distract us with, I don't get into any of that. I just focus on the charts. Um, so if you like that, that's what you got to look forward to. If this is your first time tuning in, congratulations, baby. You are now rocking with the best. Yo boy, BK, the boss of Bitcoin. You know what I'm saying? I, I got to be a little bit quiet. I'm in this nice hotel and they lobby right now downstairs on the free internet. So I don't want the people at the front desk to come over here looking crazy. So I got to behave myself. But please believe we make money every day. And just because the market is down a little bit, trust me, we are getting ready. You know what I'm saying? Stalk your prey because in two weeks, it's going to be ready to pounce. So I try to keep these videos lively. I try to keep them educational, entertaining. If you appreciate it, subscribe, turn your notifications on. I do these videos around the clock. I might jump on at two o'clock in the morning just for my people in Saudi Arabia one time. What's good? You know, holla at your boy. Let's keep it positive, guys. As as we increase our affluence and our influence, let uh, you know continue to increase the support and the love we have for each other. It's your boy BK. No matter where you stay, from Diego to Brazil to the Bay. Good night, good morning, and good day. Talk to y'all later. Peace.